Hey everybody. Today we're doing a full example constructing a confidence interval for a population mean when the population standard deviation is known. We'll also spend a little time talking about the structure of the margin of error, what could cause it to be larger or smaller on a given example. I want to talk about your home bathroom scale. Now, readings on that scale are not going to be perfectly accurate. Sometimes the scale will read a little high, sometimes it'll read a little low. It's reasonable to assume that those readings are going to be normally distributed with a mean equal to the true weight of the person being weighed. So sometimes the readings will be a little high and sometimes a little low, but on average, um, the highs and the lows will balance out. Let's assume that the population standard deviation here is 1.2 pounds. By the way, in this example, it's reasonable to think we would have access to that information. Um, the accuracy of that scale might be known to us. Now, we aren't particularly interested in any individual reading on this scale, um, or even any small collection of readings on this scale. What we really care about is the true weight of the person being weighed, and that is a parameter. Let's call it mu. So what we really want to do here is to construct a confidence interval for mu. We're going to weigh a person repeatedly, find the sample mean of those weighings, and then use this formula mu equal x bar plus or minus z star sigma over root n. Of course, x bar is going to be the sample mean, n is the sample size, sigma is the population standard deviation. z star is going to be the critical z value corresponding to the level of confidence c. Let's get a bit more specific in our example. Suppose we weigh a statistician on the scale n equals 5 times and get an average weight of 153.2 pounds. That's a sample mean. Let's construct a level 90% confidence interval for the statistician's true weight, continuing to assume a standard deviation for the scale of 1.2 pounds. Here again is our formula for the confidence interval. We just need to plug in. Again, the sample mean is 153.2, n is 5, and sigma is 1.2. Here, um, z star equals 1.645 is the critical z score corresponding to the confidence level of 90%. And you can get that using technology or by looking at a table. Simplifying that slightly, we get 153.2 plus or minus 0.88 pounds. Since this is a level 90% confidence interval, we expect that this interval will capture the true weight of the statistician in 90% of cases. All right, let's talk about the structure of the margin of error a tiny bit. The margin of error has the form z star sigma over the square root of n. So there's three ingredients that are going into that. First of all is the z star, or to say it slightly differently, the confidence level c, because those things go hand in hand. Second of all is the spread in the population, the variability there, so the standard deviation sigma. And finally, the third ingredient is the sample size, n. Now, if we change any one of those three things, we're going to get a very predictable change in the margin of error. If we increase the confidence level C, that's going to increase the margin of error. It's going to increase the Z star and therefore E as well. This makes sense. All of the things being equal, if we want to get the right answer more often, we have to allow ourselves a greater margin of error. Secondly, if we increase sigma, we're going to increase the margin of error e. Um, if there's more spread in the data, our sample mean is going to be a less reliable predictor of the population mean. Finally, increasing the sample size is going to decrease the margin of error. If that sample mean has more data going into it, it's going to become a more reliable predictor of the population mean. Um, by the way, all three of these things make sense algebraically as well if you look at that formula, E equals Z star sigma over the square root of n. Z star and sigma are both in numerators, so making either one of those bigger is going to um, increase the entire value E. N, however, is in a denominator, and so increasing N is going to decrease the value of E overall. So let's conclude by going back to the confidence interval that we built which was a 90% confidence interval with standard deviation 1.2 and n equals 5. 
And let's go modify the values for C, sigma, and N and see the effects on the margin of error. If we keep everything the same except for the confidence level, increasing the level of confidence from 90% to 95%, now we have a Z star of 1.960, leading to a margin of error of 1.05. So as we expect, we have a wider um, confidence interval, a larger margin of error. Putting C back to 90%, but this time increasing sigma to 1.5, and of course leaving N at 5, we again get a wider interval. This time the margin of error is 1.1 pounds. Finally, keeping um, sigma at 1.2 and confidence level 90%, but changing N from 5 to 10, we get a margin of error of 0.62. This time the um, margin of error is less, the confidence interval is more narrow. One question this raises. Two of these changes are very realistic. One of them is not. Can you see which one uh, is less realistic? You might pause the video here. So it's easy to weigh the statistician um, extra times, changing n. And the choice of e was ours from the start, so changing the level of confidence is very easy to do. However, the standard deviation, sigma of the scale, um, is not going to be something that we have control of. So going back to the three potential changes on that previous slide, only two of them are really potential changes that we could make. 